with the pioneer of technical analysis in India only on Inkina. Welcome back. We've been talking about the Fibonacci reversal uh, levels. We've seen that on the bullish moves and on the bearish moves. Now, these moves or these retracements, as we said, have magic numbers of uh, 61.8. That's the most often uh, referred to number. Uh, you have shallow uh, reversals and you have deep reversals. At 23.6% level, it's a shallow reversal. At 61.8% is a deep reversal. Which of these levels, Doc, is seen more often? Well, it's not a question of which is seen more often. All of them are seen. It depends on the trend of the stock. I'll actually illustrate this with two, two sets of charts. One is Suzlon and the other uh, will be Axis Bank. On the chart of Suzlon, this is a stock which had fairly uh, you know, severe trend on the downside. And you can look at this. This is the first leg down. So I'm making that my reference swing. You can see that the rally was just up to the 38% retracement. Now that's a minimal. 23 to 38 is, is actually the minimal. The more minimal it is, the stronger the trend in that same direction. So there's a minimal upside retracement. So the trend is to the downside and the trend is very strong to the downtrend. So now if I measure another one from here, I use this as my new reference swing. I use this and I find that it's again up to only 38%. And because the retracements were minimal, look, the stock has not been able to get up at all. It's, you know, it's even down till today. And if you were to look at another example, which would be Axis Bank, and uh, when I look at the chart of Axis Bank, what you find here is an exact opposite. Now you had a reference swing down here and look at this upside swing. It, it moves up straight into the 61.8%. So this is the, uh, you know, the deep retracement that you talk about. When you have a deeper retracement and it starts going above the 62% retracement, it is actually a signal that the trend is changing, which is why Axis Bank stopped being into a downtrend and actually flipped over to a complete uptrend, which put it to a new high. So if you have a shallow retracement, the trend is still on. If you have a deeper retracement and that gets exceeded, the trend actually gets reversed. And so that becomes an important uh, resistance level very that is broken so, and then so. becomes a support at a future very much so. point of time. Yep. Okay, so much for the reversals. They can be shallow, they can be medium and they can be deep and all three are very, very useful. But uh, another important use for Fibonacci rep uh, retracements is how it can be combined with many patterns and especially flag and pennant formations where you have a vertical flagpole followed by a period of consolidation. These kind of movements uh, work very well with Fibonacci retracement levels and they give you good clues as to how you can enter into trades. Doc, let's look at some. Well, let me illustrate that on a chart as well because what you have described is a pattern and the pattern is best seen on a chart. Now, what I have on here is a chart of Larson and Tubro and you have a rising leg and then I have overlaid this retracement on it. Right, this is the reference swing and this is the first of the retracement. But notice here that you have a sharp decline which makes for something like a pole and then you have something like a pennant formation which is a small triangle. And at this stage you have a decline, you have a pattern and you have a downside break. All this is also additionally getting combined with a break of the 38% retracement. So when you have all these things going at the same time, the pattern plus the retracement resolution, I think you have a bigger signal which you should definitely act on. And as is visible on the chart here, this was a pretty devastating fall. But 38% you would say is a medium uh, retracement. Yes, it is. But then it gave in. And then you are looking at then at least a 62% retracement, 50 or 62. But this was a chart in Larson which just kept going and going and going. So I think the, uh, you know, the addition of the pattern actually helped it to sort of develop a little more bearishness on the, on the, on okay. on the downside. Well, uh, like all patterns and all uh, indicators, uh, there are always some problem areas associated with them or there are some times and some type of situations where they don't work uh, as perfectly as you would like them to. The same goes for the Fibonacci numbers and the Fibonacci retracements. Where should one be aware and cautious about using these? Well, as far as the Fib retracements are concerned, uh, I never really like to call them a failure because what, what I have found through a lot of observation of charts is, is that if there is an excess retracement of any one particular reference swing, it is actually market's way of signaling you that it is actually retracing something even larger. Now let me illustrate that with a chart of Tisco. Now normally when you put on a chart you see a certain set of bars, right? And then if you look at it you will see this as your set of bars, a low here and a high here. And then I have put on this retracement and then you find that the fall that you get, not once but twice, is exactly to the 62% retracement. 
Now when it starts rising, you actually think that, you know, it's going to be a new uptrend. But then it, it halts here and then breaks the 618 retracement. So this is telling you that the market is actually going to retrace something larger. Now when you get something like this, that is when you should actually switch and slightly enlarge the chart, wherein you will actually find that uh, this particular chart of Tesco, which, which we are seeing, is not really retracing the first move that we had on here, this is the first move, but it is actually retracing a much larger swing. And when you put on this larger swing here, if you notice I have both the retracements on, this is the larger swing from the bottom here, right till the top here. And then when you measure those extra moves on the downside, they are exactly to the 62% retracement of a larger swing. So this is what you typically find when what looks like a failure on one chart is actually retracement of a larger swing. So it's a signal from the market that the trend is becoming, you know, the, you know, the set of retracement is addressing a larger reference swing. So this and is so how would you trade it then? You've seen it's the larger swing. Yeah, so you need to go back and look at a larger reference swing and then you know that this is going to retrace some more and then you draw in the fresh 50% and 62% and look for your supports with the larger reference swing. Right. Okay, well, uh, Fibonacci levels, uh, th we've spoken about uh, the ratios in terms of uh, uh, the 61% uh, level, but they also work in ratios of greater than 1, and it uses the same logic as what we explained earlier. So if you have uh, the multiples, then become 1.618, and they become 2.618. So here what you do is you basically divide the number by the number before it and, and two numbers before it. So you get a multiple which is larger than one and these then similarly give you projections into the future of uh, potential support areas and areas of decline. Yeah, it sounds uh, like it's a lot of math but let's see it on the chart because it always makes it a lot easier. Yeah, you bet. That, that's really the way it works. So just like you have retracements, you also have projections. Now the projections are used when you want to look at newer price areas, particularly when you are at new, let's say newer price areas. And let me illustrate that with a chart of State Bank. As, as well as Crompton Greaves. On State Bank, you have a nice upward move here, right? So I use this as the reference swing. Once you have a reference swing upward, then you'll have your reaction swing, which is what you measure using your retracement. Your projection swing, which you have here, is actually calculated using the 1.618 and 2.618, etc. after the completion of your reaction. So you take this and you do your multiple 1 and 1.618 and 2. And then you add it to the bottom at the end of the reaction to arrive at a new price target. Now here I have put in two projections. One is, uh, first is the one multiple and second is the 1.618 multiple. And as you can see, it progresses pretty smoothly till it gets to the one multiple, suffers a little bit of sideways consolidation there, breaks out upward and goes right into the 1.618 multiple of this original swing projected upward from the end of the reaction. That's what you, you have to really remember. Take the original swing, do a multiple of it, project it up from the end of the reaction because that is the, that is the projection swing. And as you see here, 1 and 1 1.618. The same thing I would also like to show you on another stock like Crompton Greaves, which in this case also shows you something fairly, fairly similar. And I've used again here a first upward swing, which is here. This is the end of the reaction. This is a pretty shallow reaction. So you have this as your swing here. Take the multiple and this is the first multiple. This is one multiple and this is a 1.618 multiple. You can see how beautifully the stock has adhered to both these multiples. So they are really magic, you know. All right, then that's a lot of numbers. Magic numbers, always remember 1.618 and 2.618. Uh, think about all of that as we head into a short break.